Yes, I keep. I'm 18 years old. I'm currently living in Asia. I moved to England when I was 11 years old. And this is my story. My face Every year, thousands of people come to the UK looking for money, jobs and a better life. Many of these hard-working people are mistreated by a minority of the British public solely because they aren't from the UK. We are going to tell you Dom's story of how he adapted to life in the UK. Well, I'm um, from a small town called Kelta, uh, from about south in Poland. No one really knows the town. It's um, near to um, it's quite a big town, Krakow. It's quite it's quite a national nationally known town uh, for like the monuments and stuff. Um, but yeah, the reason I came. Well, firstly, my dad was the first one to come here. He was he's found a job in England, and um, obviously my mom, my mom and myself have moved a year after him. He just he just thought we just thought we have a better life in here um, and see see how things will go maybe like he was, he was thinking about like future and stuff his future and uh, we just thought you know we'll see what happens many immigrants arrive in the UK in the hope they can gain work and financial security which their native homes can't provide the UK also provides opportunities such as a strong education system and better health care However, there can be many barriers, such as learning the English language. It was it was quite scary thinking I have to I have to go. To, I didn't have to go to school straight away. Um, I had like two months to get obviously used to the environment and country. But um, learn, I just learned English as I was in school. Obviously, speak. I tried to listen to music that was English. I'm trying to trying to speak to people as, as best as I could. But it was, yeah, it was, it was hard. But it took me, like, it was really quick to learn it. I don't know why, why, why it was so quick. I learned it. It must have been about four to five months that I learned, like, communicate with others, so they understood me. I did, I did have um, in year seven, when I was starting different school, when I moved to high school. Um, obviously, another school, another new bunch of people to meet and stuff, trying to get along with them. I did have some comments and prejudice about, oh, well, he's, he doesn't speak Polish, how he's supposed to, you know, communicate with him, or he, or he doesn't understand anything, just don't talk to him. But yeah, I just I just got these kind of comments from people, well, outside of school as well, from me, when I, in Evesham, when I was trying to hang around with, like, you know, to meet new people and stuff, and like town, or well, my similar age, that was, it was, it was pretty hard. I mean, you have to make that first kind of first good impression. I know you're still a kid, but you just have to you have to kind of like squeeze in and just don't worry about or what they will say. Just be like, be trying to be yourself. This country would give me plenty of stuff that I could not get in England, in Poland. I mean, having job like for me, for example, now having a part-time job, going to good school, learning what I want to do in my life. It kind of, it makes me think that I would I would never have that in Poland. I would never be as close as I'm here now. And I mean, I could have plenty of more in here. You don't get that inspiration there. You don't get that courage to do anything. They don't give you this, this kind of, they don't give you any ideas about it. You, know, you just have to, you have to like power through it. When it's hard when you like below 18. Parents have the ultimate decision on a second chance to family life and stability so they experience a different kind of stress and worry in the adjustment to British life. Rozmawia po angielsku, po polsku, pisze, porozumiewa się w dwóch językach w sposób biegły. Pracuje dodatkowo. Na pewno zrobił wiele, wiele, wiele dobrych rzeczy. There were, there were those days when I was 
still like 12, 13. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of you know, mates to talk to. I didn't have a lot of stuff to do because obviously, what can you do when you have no, no mates when you're a kid? Not going out, you know, just staying in, and I just, you know, I was just getting bored and tired of it, and I just, you know, I was just keeping the feelings inside, but I didn't want to tell my parents about it because I knew it would upset them. But once I just broken down and I said I, I don't want to be here anymore because I just I can't handle it. But the support I got from my parents and the stuff they explained to me what I could do, I mean, it helped me a lot. Just powering them through and being here, trying to get along with others, trying to meet someone, meet meet people, mates and stuff to get along, start conversations, do something together, you know. So you're not bored. This at this age you have to have you know, someone to talk to and stuff, not just your parents. Although many immigrants treat Britain as their home, can they really say that they feel British? I spent 11 years in, in Poland. I was raised in Poland. I have family, as I was saying earlier, I have family in Poland. It's, it's all coming back to the, to the country where I was born. I don't think I could ever feel British, even if I have a British passport, even if I was living 30 years in England, I would still not feel British. And I'll definitely not forget Polish language either. If I don't forget it, I'll, I'll do anything to learn it back. If I lose like, the important bits, because I know how important it is to have that as your main language, because your family speaks that language. If you think about it, you lose this language, well, how, how, would that, how, would other, how would other things work? So, definitely no. Dom's story has a positive outcome, yet not all immigrants are as fortunate and don't receive the support Dom has had. So think twice about discrimination against immigrants. I'm uh, Dominik Kasecki. I'm officially from Poland. It was my story. Thank you for listening.
and I'm short and golden. I'm 18 years old. I got strapped for the Pan Ivan College. And this is my story. I first realised I was gay when I was about 10, 11 years old, just before I went to secondary school. Um, I weren't really like into what all the other lads were into. Didn't really have any interest in girls as much as what everyone else did. Everyone else wanted to talk about what they were doing with girls or speaking to this girl or all the other like supermodels or whatever. Or like the really pretty celebrities. And everyone else would say they were sexy and I'd be there like, oh yeah, she's really pretty. You could tell the difference. I stuck out like a sore thumb straight away. Nah, I didn't tell anyone till I was very, very late 17, just before I turned 18. Um, first person I told was my mate Emma. I don't know why I didn't tell anyone before then. I just thought people were going to look at me differently. I didn't really think anyone was going to treat me as the same person as what I was when really nothing could change. And that was my main concern up until I told the first person. I felt a lot easier in myself and I felt a lot more comfortable that I told someone, but I was still really, really nervous because I thought, okay, now everything that's happened to me over the past like nearly 10 years, I've now told someone and she could have went and told anyone before I was ready for people to know about it. So I was still nervous and when I first told Emma, like, it made it serious, it made it real because all these thoughts had gone in my head but I was planning to sort of keep them in my head forever at that moment in time. So when I told Emma it just seemed a lot more real and it made me even more nervous. I first met Jordan in year eight and year eight, year nine um, through one of our closest pals, Teddy Pages. I've known Jordan since year nine, so about five, six years. Um, I, I kind of knew him before that, but we weren't friends. I was a little bit intimidated by him and we, we properly met when we were put in the same media class. I've known Jordan since October 2012. Uh, I came to the college on a part-time basis to, to teach some radio skills and to teach some interviewing skills and I was lucky enough to have one C um, as my babies and, um, and worked with them a lot during that October. When he first told me, he was really like scared about it. Um, he was nervous to tell other people, but he seems quite confident about it now. He is scared to do this, like, do this documentary and tell everyone, but I think it will just make him even stronger than he is. No one on the planet has got a right to tell him, log about himself really, uh, uh, not about himself, but about this particular subject. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, he's gay, so what? I know a few people that would rather not be here than come out gay. Do you know what I mean? I think that's like quite worrying. I think it's quite alarming. Like, I know I used to be like that. Like, I would have rather just not been here than tell people that I was gay because of. And that's not because I was ashamed of myself. I was more worried about everyone else being ashamed of me. I was worried about like my family being ashamed of me, my mates being ashamed of me. Like, that was my main concern. So yeah, I would have done, any, done anything to change it, anything at all. I know people who have they've been they've come out gay to the family and they've been thrown out of their homes. They've been beat up by their dads. They've been beat up by the brothers. The sisters have disowned them. Um, um, I, I've heard some pretty bad like, horror stories about how it's been for people and um, I don't know, like that was another reason why I was so nervous to come out to people because like, I've heard some pretty bad stories about it but I'm just thankful. I don't really think about how it could have went because I'm more happy about how it did go. I try to focus on what's actually happening rather than what could have happened, if you understand what I mean. Like, I'm just sort of glad 
that my experience has been positive so far. It may not be for much longer, but so far it has been good and couldn't really knock anyone for that. When it comes to my family, like I really couldn't I couldn't say anything more about them than like they have just been amazing. Um, I was most nervous about telling them obviously because it's your family, you see them every day, you're going to see them every day for the rest of your lives and obviously like, I'm only 18 so I haven't really met anyone that I love as much as my family yet. So I was most nervous about telling them but my mum in particular just keeps letting me know how proud she is of me over it so it's just I don't know, um, I'm really, really glad I told her. I'm really, really glad I told all my family because they've just been supporting me all the way. And like, they let me know the dangers that are out there, but they still let me know to be proud of myself and to be true to myself and to not be ashamed of it and to be able to hold my head higher as I'm walking around. And that's what they've taught me, so I'm thankful for that. So. From my heart, honestly, I, I, I always knew. And I'm happy. I'm happy that when you're happy. I always say it if, if my kids are happy and somebody could love them as much as I love them, then I'm a happy mum and I've achieved what I wanted to do. And to be honest, I hated John when he was straight. So <laughs> just with this guy. I still hate. It. <laughs> no, I do, and I love John to pieces. Um, whether he's gay or straight, he'll always be my brother and I just love him, like he's my best friend. And, I mean, he's, he was mentioned about his, his nan as well, his nan knew. We all knew from when he started wearing Kaylee's tights on his head, from when he was younger and romping And cried because he never and, got the main part in Greece. And <laughs> danced to Spice Girls with Natalie over and over again. We knew, <laughs> That's when you know. but it doesn't matter. You are who you are and I love you regardless. When Jordan came out, uh, to me, um, it wasn't a shock, it was a relief. It was a relief for him, I could see it in his eyes. Um, it was a relief for his mum, who is just as, as adorable as Jordan is. Oh, obviously me and Jordan don't do soppy stuff, but I tell him that I was proud of him and for what he's doing, and it's a really brave thing to do, and that I'll always be here for him. <laughs> Um, I just say, keep doing what you're doing, you know, keep being gay, there's nothing wrong with being gay, you know, be gay, do gay things, do whatever you want to do, you know what I mean, don't let anyone tell you different, sweet, sweeter than that mate. <laughs> my message would be that Jordan will be my big brother no matter what and I love him to pieces and he can tell me anything the same way that I should be able to tell him anything. So yeah, I love you Jordan. <laughs> I'm very proud of you and I love you regardless and I know all the families behind you and I know will be very proud of you and just be happy and have a happy life regardless. Sexuality doesn't define you, it's having good morals and having a good heart and you've got both of them so I know you're going to go far. So anyone who's in my position or my situation, I'd definitely say to them not to beat yourself up over it because things are changing at the moment. and. You don't need to be worried about it anymore because I spent so long beating myself up over it and worrying about what like, other people were going to think and what my mates were going to think and what my family were going to think. And now I really, really wish that I didn't. Like all those nights that I stayed up and I weren't sleeping the whole night and all those I like arguments that I'd have with people if they said anything to me about being gay. My experiences now are better than what they were before I come out gay. So everyone's got to do it in their own time and everyone will know when they're ready to, but it's not something that people need to worry about and it's not something that you need to lose sleep over or stress over or get upset over. You should be proud of yourself. My name's Jordan Golden, I'm 18, I'm gay and this was my story. <laughs>